Hello again, this is Dr. Bombstark for uh, Computer Science 1302, and today we're going to talk about something called debugging. Now this is uh, <laughs> one of those things that's kind of a, 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 of a dark art in, in, in computer science, um, and it's one of those things that you get better with um, as you practice it, but we're going to cover some of the basics today. It's a very powerful tool and skill for um, finding errors in your code. Um, it is not a replacement for other good practices like uh, uh, robust unit test suites and uh, good coding style and, and good, de good software design, but it does complement those, uh, th those practices as a way to, to find errors in your code. So, what do we mean by debugging? It's simply locating and fixing the errors in your program. Um, and we can do that a lot of ways. Part well, again, one of the ways we can do that is is with a good suite of unit tests. Um, but we, where they fail, and and where this picks up is is finding more localized kinds of things. We have this tool called a debugger that helps us do this. Um, and some of the features it has are the ability to um, stop and resume the execution of a program. Uh, we can actually trace through our program line by line, instruction by instruction, um, and inspect the content of variables as we do to monitor the changes that, um, that each line of code has on the state of our system. Now, every program, programming language I have ever uh, used had a debugger of some sort, um, and Java is, is no exception. Um, the, it has one built in for Eclipse that works very, very well. It's a nice visual debugger. Um, we're going to use that one, but understand that the concepts and principles that we're going to talk about um, using the Eclipse debugger apply to most other programming languages as well. So, the Eclipse debugger. Uh, we'll we'll look at, at, at some specific features. Um, one is called the debug perspective. Um, that's a way of, uh, that's just a way to switch to kind of the debugging uh, facilities of Eclipse. We'll look at breakpoints, uh, tracing execution, and inspecting variables. Uh, breakpoints, execution tracing, uh, variable inspection, these are common to all debuggers. Um, so in Eclipse, you click on this icon to begin debugging your program. And what that icon will do is it will literally start running your program in debug mode and allow you to step through it um, and stop at various places and look at what's going on. So one thing we want to, to be able to do while we're uh, debugging is to stop at specific places in the code. Um, you. In other words, you have an intuition or an idea about where the bug might be in your code. You don't want to step through the, the entire program because, you know, in general, we're talking programs that'll have hundreds or thousands or millions of lines of code, and we don't want to have to go through those every time. We want to just focus on the, the pieces of code where we think the problem is. Um, and we can use a deep, uh, break point to do that. Um, so with a break point, we set a marker at a specific line of code and thinking yet, you know, my error probably comes within a few lines of this, uh, or a few lines after this. So we stop it, we, we run our program to that breakpoint, and then we start stepping through the code to give, a, give it a closer look. So in Eclipse, we can set these, these breakpoints simply by double clicking in the left margin. And you'll see a little green uh, dot appear to, to show that. Um, you can also enable and disable existing breakpoints. So if you have a lot of them, you might want to hang on to the breakpoint, but you know, you know, make sure that the, the program runs past it for now. You may not want, want to stop at it right now. Um, and you can also have the ability to view and manage. In practice, I generally just set a few breakpoints and run to them, stop at them, and let that be it. I don't really need any other, I don't need to manage them uh, beyond that. So let's set a breakpoint and um, show you what happens when we start debugging. So this uh, project, Debugger Sandbox, is the one that's available to you um, as part of this lecture. 
has three classes, uh, a main, a demo controller, and a grade class. I'm going to set, um, I'm in the grade class here, I'm going to set a debugger, uh, uh, a breakpoint, sorry, to step through the lines of its parse grade uh, method. So I'm going to do that, right click and toggle breakpoint there. So now I've got my little dot, that's my breakpoint, and when I start debugging, yeah, sometimes you'll see this the selection cannot be launched. When we do that, we actually need to, to run this as a debugger first. Um, and this is actually my preferred way of doing things. Right click on uh, the class that has your main method and do a debug as Java application. Uh, so it's asking me to enter a grade. I'll put in 75. And now it's asking me to, con to switch over to the debug perspective. And I'm going to do that. And while I'm in the debug perspective, now we're, we've run our program up to my breakpoint line. I could set another breakpoint, say, here and run up to that using the continue button. So you can have as many breakpoints as you like um, to stop at interesting places in your code um, and you don't have to step between them, you can always continue to the next one. Okay, now once we have some breakpoints set, uh, we can start tracing execution line by line. And you do that with these sets of, um, of of icons here. The green arrow is for resume. You've already seen what what that does. If you're at any line of code in your program and stopped, you can hit that green arrow and it will run until it hits another breakpoint. If your program is running and, and not stopping at any breakpoints and you want to end the program, you can hit the red uh, square. So it's just like a stop button on a, um, on a Windows Media Player or something like that. So think of this as start and run. And these three icons are for stepping through uh, the program. I'm going to start with the one in the middle, step over. And I'm going to stop my program and run it again. Oops. Okay, that's interesting. Let's switch back to the Java perspective. Oh, that's right. I forgot to. There we go. Forgot that I had to have to enter something. It was waiting for me to do that. Okay. So now I'm in my debug perspective. I am stopped on this line because that's where I had a breakpoint. Let's use the step over to step through each line of code in, um, in, in, in this method. So step over once. So apparently my string was not equal to null, so I, I skipped over the throw new legal, legal argument exception. Skip to the next line. It's going to try to parse my int. It should be successful at that because it was a good int. So it's not going to catch. Step again. It's going to check to see if the grade is within the proper range, and it should be. And then we can return grade. And if I step again, it will probably go back to the line that called the parse grade method. And I can keep stepping from there as well, line by line. Gonna stop that and I'm gonna we'll go back and talk about some of the other options F5 is the step into what distinguishes it from step over if step over encounters a line with uh, a method call in it step over will simply move to the next line it will execute the method in the background but it, it won't go into it step into will actually go into that method and uh, execute the, the um, lines there. So let's do that with our code here. I'm going to set a breakpoint on this line. 
Notice there's a call to parse grade, which we've already been playing with. And I'm going to run my program up to that point. So I'm going to enter my grade. We'll make it 80 this time. And now we're stopping at this line. If I hit step over, it will execute parse grade, but not, but not um, trace through the lines of it. But if I do a step into, it takes me into that method, and I can um, look at uh, the lines that go through there. And now I keep going. All right, stop again, and we'll look at the very last one. This one is step return. If you're inside a method and you're um, executing statements inside that method, and you decide that you don't need to, to execute anymore, you can do a step return, and it will run that method to the end, return, and then let you keep um, debugging. So let's show an example of how that works. I'm going to remove my breakpoint here. So now when I debug, and I put in a grade, now I'm in the parse grade method. And I could step through a couple lines in there. And I decide, you know, I don't need to do any more debugging inside this method. I'm going to hit step return. And so it does that, and it returns back to the line that called uh, parse grade. And I could keep going from there on out. Step over, step over, step over, and we keep going working through the um, lines of that code. Now, prompting me for a grade, I'll do that to keep going. So that's the difference between uh, step into, step over, and step return. Uh, for me, in my experience, I hardly ever use a step return. Uh, just my, my personal workflow, you may find it useful, I, I don't. Um, I don't often use step into either. Um, mostly I'm a step over person, um, I, usually, I can isolate the code that I need to, to debug down to a few lines and, and can do that. But you have these others available to you if you need them. All right, the last piece of this puzzle is inspecting variables. Um, in other words, we want to know how the values of variables change as we debug through our program. <coughs> Excuse me, I've been talking too much today. Uh, um, so as we're stepping through, variables are going to be changing, and we want to know what those values are. Um, in the Eclipse debugger, there are several ways we can do that. Uh, the first is we simply hover over the variable in the code. It will tell us um, the value of that variable. That's not always useful, um, especially for object types. We want to use what's called the variable view, which will actually let us open up an object and look at uh, the values of its instance variables and, and, and well, usually the values of its instance variables. Um, and that uh, can be a lot more uh, useful information for us. Uh, we can even get in there and change the, the values of those variables as we're uh, <clears throat> working through the program. Maybe something comes up, uh, a variable value is wrong, and you want to change it just to, to see if things work when it's right. You, you'd, push a, a correct value in there and keep keep stepping through. You could do that. Uh, again, it's not something I use very often, but uh, I definitely use these other two quite a bit. Um, so we're going to go back here and uh, note that right now we are still debugging. Uh, so I'm stopped on this line that says grade equals grade dot parse grade of line. I can hover over any value. Probably index would be a good one and it tells me that the value of that. This works really well for primitives. Um, it probably probably works well for, um, no, it does, doesn't do too good for strings. Any object type, the hover, do, doesn't work very great, but do, you know, any primitive like an int or a double uh, or a boolean would, would work well there. Um, however, for the everything else, there is the variable view. And I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger in hopes to get it all in camera here. Get a lot of in interesting uh, information. Um, and in fact, there's a piece here that I've never seen before, uh, probably because I've just never encountered it. Uh, we just got back from a step return, and it tells me what 
uh, that method returned. There was a next line method and it says that that returned the string 78, which is pretty useful. Everything else uh, listed here are variables and objects that are within the current scope. So anything that is visible to the program at this point in time where I'm stopped is, is available to see here. Notice we have the max number of grades, which is probably an int. It's telling me that it has a value of three. Um, there is an array of grades that we can uh, open that up and see that at index zero, it has a 90. At index one, it has a zero. At index two, it has a zero. And as that, um, as that, uh, or if that array were to be bigger, we'd have more, but no, it's an array, so it's fixed. I was thinking it might be a, just double checking, it might be an array list, but it is not. Um, we have a current value of grade, which uh, shows as 90, the current index, which is 1. We have a line object, which I believe is a string, yes. So we can pull it out, and there's some information there that honestly we don't really care about. Really, for, for strings, usually we just want to know the value. In this case, it's uh, seven eight, but we can dig down in and see some things like the values of the specific characters and such. Um, you can even see information about the scanner object here. Um, I wouldn't dig into that if I were you because it's not really going to be useful. But I do want to go back up to this, although does it have... well no, no that's not useful here. Um, Usually you can pull this down because it, it refers to the current object. I'm going to step through until we get something useful for this. I'm going to... There we go. So if you look now, I am inside the grade class. Oh, but I'm in a static method, so <laughs> that's not going to do anything useful for me. I'm sorry. Um, usually with this... Uh, if you see it in the variables list, um, it um, do something there. Um, it will actually show up something like an object, and you can drop it down there, and you can see the values of its instance variables. And it always refers to the class, an object of the class that you are currently in. So just like you would do this dot dot um, name or this dot age inside a person class or something like that. Uh, if you're writing your code, you can examine this, which is an object in Java, points to an object in Java, points to the current object uh, we are inside of. So you can look at that object's instance variables. Um, for this uh, you know, e example project, I don't think we're going to be able to pull it out, but uh, just know that's available to you. All right, from here on out, um, you have an in-class exercise. Um, if you have some instructions, but basically you're going to download this uh, project that we've been looking at right now, and there are some methods that have errors in them. I would like you to set breakpoints, step through them, examine the, the variables as they change to see if you can figure out what those errors are. Um, this would be a very useful skill to develop for the future. All right, that is it for today. Um, again, if you have questions, let me or, or Dr. Yang know. We will be glad to help out.